Greetings, greetings, greetings. Good afternoon, good morning, good evening, and welcome. <laughs> this is our mentee, the Oracle, the Awakener. And I'm doing another video blog. I think I'm getting used to this. And I would like to share with you some information which is really going to help to bring some clarity with regards to awakening the divine feminine. Now, this is no, not, in no means an ego trip in terms of awakening the divine feminine. This is not an ego trip. We have had, to, we have had the experience of matri matriarchal, uh, sorry, patriarchal um, rule for the past 2,000 years. And that's because we have chosen to come here and experience duality. So we have to experience yin and we have to experience yang. And we are coming out of the shift of that patri sorry, matriarch patriarchal energy and we are moving into a space of oneness. So if we look at it like this, this is the scale. And on one side, you've got patriarchy. On another side, you've got matriarchy. And we've been in the process of being in the realm of patriarchy for the past 2,000 years. So patriarchy has pushed its energy over and become the more dominant energy and force, leaving matriarchy in this small um, subjugated area here. So in order to bring change now, the, the matriarch has, has to have e extra energy in order to push and tip that scale right over the edge maybe seeming to suppress the masculine energy just a little bit, but in order to get back to that place of balance, that place of ma'at, so that both can understand each other and that oneness can resume once more. So this is the process that we are going in. This is the process that we are in in this very moment. And we are empowering ourselves. Divine women, we are empowering ourselves. We're remembering who we are. We are standing in our power. And to our brothers, you're receiving more. You're understanding yourself more. You're seeing that being forceful and, and being the masculine energy on its own is no way to move forward. Understand that we need to move forward in harmony, in unity, in oneness. So bearing that in mind, I have been receiving a lot of information. Now, this is something I've known, I've always known, but I've been doing some more research and I want to share something with you because at the moment we have to try and erase some of these negative paradigms or these negative connotations that we have for each other so that we can really start to see the God self, the God essence within each and every one of us. So what I'm going to discuss today is the term whore. W-H-O-R-E, whore. Now, how many times have you heard somebody call, being called a whore? How many times have you called yourself a whore or called another person a whore? Where does that word come from? Now, if I was to tell you that the word whore derives from the word Horus, and the word Horus is or or Horus is the Egyptian deity who is the manifestation of the light and he's a manifestation of the masculine energy he is the son of Isis and Osiris he represents the light because he goes into the underworld into his darkness into the darkness to retrieve the lost parts or the lost soul lost soul fragments of his father whilst Isis um, reclaims the lost physical fragments of Osiris and bring those to the light he makes that journey into our duat that our darkness um, and brings forth the light he is also the representation of the masculine energy energy. His wife's name is Hetheru. She is Hathor. So, okay, how does this all connect to the world whore? Now, sexual energy is very, very, very powerful and very important. The divine feminine holds within her the sacred chalice, which is her womb. When you go to priests, sorry, when you go to um, religious spaces, when you go to temples, some of the main places in the in London as well, the Masonic temples and buildings, they have pictures of females standing over the archways, holding open their yonis, their womb. Why? Now, the womb is the portal of creation. It is the portal that we all come through in order to have this physical body. It is the space which is inhabited by the Most High, where the Most High and his creations meet and they're birthed into reality. Okay, so through sexual practice, we bring forth life. We bring forth creation. Um, one thing I would add is that sexuality or sexual act 
is not the only thing which brings about creation, which brings about new life. Actually, it's one of the lowest aspects. It's actually the divine connection and intention between the two beings that are making that love at that time, which creates the, um, the life. However, let me get back to the point. So sexual practice is a way of connecting with the divine. We've all heard about tantric um, um, tantra, but a lot of us have misconceptions about tantra. It's not just about foreplay and withholding energy. It's really about tuning into one of the most powerful vibrational energies that there is. It is so potent that it creates life and it can also be used to create and manifest positivity. But it also can be a portal for darkness and be used to manifest negativity. And that is the way that we have been encouraged and taught subconsciously, consciously how to use our sexual energy. We make love at night. We dress up, but we don't necessarily dress up in ways which empower us and pertain to higher vibrational energies. But the practice of tantrica, the practice of sexual healing, as Marvin Gaye said, is a powerful gateway towards the divine and also a powerful tool to help you understand and know yourself. So, whore comes from the, from the name Horus and was given to the titles of the priestesses of Horus, who were actually the priestesses of Heru. Now, these priestesses were responsible for facilitating sexual healing. They were responsible for facilitating the creation of connecting the masculine energy with the feminine energy and teaching them how to be God within the divine union of oneness. And this has happened in many traditions. You talk about the Vestas of the Greeks and the Roman times. In the Victorian times, you would have the brothels and the whorehouses. This is because the patriarchal system wanted to take away from the power of the woman's ability to create with, to connect with the creator and also to be that, that gateway towards the divine. There were many patriarchal, or sorry, there were many men of a certain era who did not, who were not happy with the fact that the woman was being revered and that the woman was a portal for creation. They themselves did not see that both man and women are one and that we are both two sides of the same coin and that when we work together, that is where the most high exists. So because of this, there was a, an agenda to set against the woman, to defamate her character, her sexual practices, take away her power and subjugate her to a position of subserviousness. And in especially in her sexual in her sexual experience, take away the one thing, the one thing which allows her to be the goddess that she is. And that's her sexual power. When a man and a woman copulate, they both are before the most high and she receives that energy. The masculine energy puts things out, it's active, it re- it puts things out, but the feminine energy receives, that's why she receives the man, and from her it's taken in, she takes in the most high within her, and she receives the man, and through that connection, through that copulation, through that unity, a life is created, a life is born. Many of us do not know how to make love properly, we do not know how to channel the most high, I mean we do it, we say, oh God, Yes, we say those things, but what are we really channeling? Who are we really, you know, what are we really doing? We watch pornos and, and, you know, different things that infiltrate and build our perception of what sexual um, experiences are supposed to be. You know, we look down on women who have very many, you know, have many sexual partners. And obviously we're looking at it from a health, health perspective. In this day and age, no, it's not the done thing. And also spiritually, we do pick up a lot of energy spiritually from people who we connect with. But the priestesses of Horus were very highly intelligent women who spent many, 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 many years training to hold the divine feminine energy, learning how to clear themselves. They were very in tune with their psychic um, gifts and their their spiritual abilities and spiritual qualities. They would learn from the Most High and from the other goddesses how to cultivate the divine feminine energy and honour it and how to um, initiate the masculine energy into the divine in this feminine, sorry, in this reality. So initiate the man into his manhood. So when a young man is 16, he would be taken to the temple of Dendera where Hathor and the priestess of Horus are. And he would be bathed, he would be washed, 
He would be prepared and a goddess, a priestess of Horus would be chosen for him and she would teach him all the ways of sexual magic. She would teach him how to connect with the Most High. She would teach him how to utilize the energy of his priestess, his woman, his wife, his queen in co-createdness. This was an important part of the initiations for male. And it was also a very important part of the initiations for females. Learning how to look after your man is more than knowing how to cook for him. It's more than knowing how to get him to do what you want. It's about being able to nurture the God within him. And men also nurturing the God within your woman. You were taught by these priestesses of Horus how to nurture, love, understand your woman. How to cultivate the God energy within her and how to bring forth light. Bring forth Horus, Haru himself through your divine connection and oneness. You know, so we've they've taken something which is positive and turned it into something which is very, very negative. We are not all the same. Not all of us have come here to be Mary. No, not all of us have come here to be mothers, not in the way of giving birth. That's not for all of us. These are choices that our souls has chosen to make before we have come to this realm. So not all of us are here for the same jobs. But in this reawakening of the divine feminine, I really wanted to share this information, not just for the sisters, but for the brothers as well. We need to start respecting each other. We need to start understanding each other. We need to stop looking at each other in such a disrespectful way and start to learn to understand and love each other. Because only through oneness, divine oneness, will we be able to see the best and have the best and be the best that we truly can be. Why is there so much heavy influence on us being negative in our sexuality? Why is there so much myth around sexuality? Why is there so much confusion around sexuality? Maybe it's because it has so much power. No, not maybe. It does. It has so much power. And ignorance is no longer bliss. You know, to my sisters out there who are feeling this sexual energy but don't know how to channel it, do some research. Use your energy in the most powerful way. There is nothing wrong with you if you do not feel like you need to be in a committed relationship. If you love making love. But just make sure that it's coming from the right place and that you're tuning into the right vibrations and the right energies. You know, some of us are coming from broken places, having negative experiences and looking for love. This needs to stop because that only puts out more negativity and we are creating children. We are creating lives from these spaces, from these places in our mentalities, in our minds, in our hearts. That is why we need to get clear. And women who are experiencing trauma in their wombs, this is also your soul telling you that on a very deep level, there's some clearing to be done. Maybe you in the past were a Vesta or a priestess of Horus. And have had negative experiences in this life towards your sexuality. Maybe you've had severe womb trauma. Maybe you feel like people only want to be with you for sex and not for anything else. It just means some work needs to be done. There's nothing wrong with you. But some work needs to be done so that it can be coming from the right place. So that you can be channeling your power from the right place. And please do not think I'm taken away from the sanctity of having a relationship between two people. I'm not taking away from that. That is one of the most joyful things that we can experience. But in in honest fit and fairness, the way that we've been taught how to love and the, our constructs of and our and our understanding of relationships is about control, and it panders to our lower vibrational um, aspects such as jealousy and greed and possession. Love is not like that. Love is free. Love is abundant. Love is responsible. Love is expressive. It's not restrictive. But you have to find what that means for you. Not living by anybody else's definitions. But if you are one of those people who have been feeling like, you know, negatively affected by your sexuality, now's the time to stand in your power. But do the research, do the work. And some of us are experience, have experienced sexual trauma and things like that. Do the work, do the research, find the help. Understand why you've chosen that in this life. But do not look at yourself in a negative vein. You do not understand the power that is within you. And once you understand the power, you will know how to use it. 
So I really wanted to share this video just to let people know that there's a lot of misconceptions around. We are not whores. We are priestesses of Horus. We are not whores. So we have to embody that. We have to understand what it means. And brothers, look at us. Look at us and see yourself within us. Look at us and see the love of the divine within us. And we will look at you and see the love of the divine in you. And when we come from this loving space and we create a union together and we, and we create ecstasy together, we are creating a new world of love. And it becomes a reality, not a myth, a reality. So I really want to encourage you all to really just try and be open to this and really try and come from a place of trying to understand your power, looking at each other differently and understanding that we must come from a place of love. There is nothing negative about us. We have come here to experience the fullness of who we are. And love, sexual union, is one of the most powerful, powerful ways to do that. So, I give thanks. I trust and hope that this message has um, reached you and, and at least given you some food for thought. I'd love to hear your comments. Um, if you've got any feedback, anything you want to share, let's have some discussion. But I really think that we need to just be aware of what we're saying and how we're looking at each other and take back our power. Now is the time. This is Armenti the Awakener, the Oracle, the Priestess. And I give thanks. I give thanks, Dua to Het Heru, Dua to Heru, Dua to you. Have a blessed, 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 blessed day. Love, love, love. Take care.